I'm your number one fan. We all go a little mad sometimes. Whatever you do. Excellent day for an exorcism. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Killer Cuties podcast. Hello, hello, hello. This is not our first episode of the new year, but it is the first time we're recording in the new year. So happy new year, Katie. Yes, thank you. <laughs> happy new year to you. <laughs> um i feel like we should have done this last episode but you know what the year hadn't ended yet so whatever yeah but i want to know katie what your top three horror movies of 2023 were and i'll allow you because you watched a lot of new horror movies to you in 2023 i'll allow you to pick any that we covered in the podcast i'll do top horror movies of 2023 that came out but if yours aren't Yours came out before that, but we covered it in the podcast. That's fine. Go for it. Thank you for allowing yeah. me that. <laughs> um, I appreciate it. <laughs> You're so welcome. Uh, um, two of them. Definitely from this year. Oh, my God. Uh, I bet I can guess. <laughs> I bet you could, too. Because it's not Renfield and it's not Five Nights at Freddy's. So, <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, so I'll give you those two first. Uh, when Evil Lurks. Of course. Obvi. That movie fucking slaps. It was everything I wanted and more. So good. So good. Um, Get Out. Hell yeah. So good. Absolutely. That has made, like, since that, I have seen every movie I possibly can in theaters as opposed to at home because it just makes mm. the experience so much better. It does. Um, But yes, Get Out. And then I really, really, really want to say Godzilla Minus One, but that's not a horror movie um, so i won't uh but it's a really good movie everybody go see it um it so i'm gonna throw it back a little bit to the baba duke a little bit meaning like two episodes ago <laughs> but that was from 2014 so yeah. you know you said get out which came out not in 2023 right oh i thought get out came out in 2023 oh it came out in 2022 it was october 2022 no get out is like longer ago get out is 2017 babe oh wait i didn't mean get out i didn't mean get out wait i didn't mean get out talk i meant talk to me (laughs) wait but get out's up there get out is good that's why i was like oh okay yeah yeah um all of the jordan peele movies fucking fire they are. Um, wait, shit. Well, what about Us? Us was really good, too. Us was really good. I liked Us more than Get Out. That's Oddly enough. Fair. <laughs> now I'm going to say Talk to Me. Because I saw Talk to Me in theaters. Why did you say something when I said I saw it in theaters? I, because you moved on so quickly that I was confused. Okay. Um... And also, I thought you meant, like, oh, I would have liked to see it in theaters, so, like, no. I'm gonna see it. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Um, j- just to <laughs> recap. Yeah. The Babadook, When Evil Lurks, <laughs> and Talk to Me. <laughs> Not in that order, necessarily. Yeah. But those three. Got it. Yeah. Um, just, what about you? What are your, you're gonna do it for real. What are your three favorite horror movies yes. of 2023? 2023, there were a lot of good ones, but there were some that I didn't see, too. So I don't know if this list is entirely accurate because I didn't get to see Totally Killer. I didn't get to see Influencer. I didn't get to see Thanksgiving. 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 Sorry. (laughs) Why do you always do that? (laughs) Yeah, you do. That one was spoiled for me, and I'm still mad about it. Um, But from the ones that I saw, talk to me. What Evil Lurks. We knew that that was coming. Those two movies absolutely fucking slapped. And I think a lot of people, that's in their top two. Like, that is their top two. Those movies were so fucking good. Um, So then it was just kind of up to third place. And there were a lot of good ones. I saw Scream 6. I saw uh, No One Will Save You. I saw The Hell House Origins. But I'm going to give third place to Saw X. (laughs) Oh! I love 
me some Saw movies. And it was actually, like, very good. Like, it has one of the highest ratings of... I think it has the highest rating of any of the Saw movies. Like... Crazy. Those sequels got bad real quick. And I love them because, you know, I'm just me, but... Are they good? Not necessarily. I like them. But Saw X was genuinely a good film. And I'm very excited for Saw 11, which is coming out this year. (laughs) Good. And speaking of that. Yeah. What are you, three movies you're most looking forward to in 2024? Horror, obviously. Okay. Um, I'll give you three and then I'll give you a bonus. Ooh, I love that. I know. Um, (laughs) Okay, so I love the original I Am Legend. And I Am Legend oh. 2 is supposedly coming out this year. Uh, I have heard I don't that. think the script is done or anything, but supposedly it could come out this year. So I'm really looking forward to that. Exciting. Um, big fan of video game to movie. Bioshock is coming out. Oh. Uh, yeah. That'll be fun. We, yeah. We've watched some friends play Bioshock on stream, so that one will be special and fun. <laughs> um and then there's supposedly a vhs sequel coming out that's specifically sci-fi mm, okay mm-hmm. um and then i'll give you one more just because it gives me the opportunity to talk about a composer oh um, here we go <laughs> yep so michael giacchino who i had no idea had any director's credits under his belt has directed a tv movie for marvel um and what did we say a couple episodes of other tv Mm -hmm. Um, he's directing a horror movie called Them, which, get this, is about a huge nest of irradiated ants that are discovered in the New Mexico desert and become a national threat when two young queen ants and their consorts escape to set up new nests. That that sounds fun. Very campy. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Nice. I hadn't heard of that one. So that's if exciting. If he does the score mm. also, which please, please, You'll please, just please, please, for the love of God. Go alone. <laughs> I'll die. He did, he did, like, I don't, I don't necessarily like Up or Incredibles, but he did both those scores, both those scores, iconic. Ratatouille, Lost. What do you mean you don't necessarily like The Incredibles? Yeah, I knew, I, yeah, I shouldn't have said that to you specifically. But, I mean, Incredibles is not the best Pixar movie of all of them. It doesn't have to be the best to be fantastic. It's it's a good movie, but it's not... I don't love it. We just shouldn't talk about animated films, because you don't get it. <laughs> you don't understand animated films. Fair. <laughs> it's not fair. No, it's not... That's not fair. I no. was just say, you gotta stand on business. You can't be saying shit. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. No. No, you can have horror movies. I'll keep Disney and animated. I think I also know good animated films. I What's just the best think animated film? My opinions are right. Shrek. That's not even, like, come on. What's the second best animated film? Shrek 2. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Franchise, then. What's the second best animated franchise? Jesus. Obviously. <laughs> God. Don't ask stupid questions. <laughs> Second to Shrek, obviously. Our Lord I don't and Savior. Know. I don't know. I have a very soft spot for <laughs> Cloudy with the Chips and Meatballs. Oh my god. That movie slaps, dude. That's so good. It's just puns. Strawberry's my favorite. No, the second one was only puns. The first one was genuinely good. Okay. Anyways. Well... <laughs> Our viewers can decide based on that answer alone who they should trust with their opinions on what animated movies. You'd say like cars. <laughs> no, I would not. The second best animated franchise of all time. Oh, franchise! It has to be a franchise. Well, no. Oh, okay. Cars is a franchise. There's like yeah, five Cars movies now. Too many. Kids love them. I love them. No, I wouldn't say Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs is the best but i'd have to think about it more there's a lot of good ones yeah oh move on duh good one wait yeah (laughs) that's a good one that's absolutely (laughs) there's also the road to el dorado that is good treasure planet 
that Treasure movie Planet. I just saw Treasure Planet for the first time like six months ago. Super underrated. I made everybody watch it. Yeah. Very good movie. Yeah. Anyways, look out for our upcoming new podcast on animated films. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, kidding. God. We would tear each other's throats so far. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. do you want to know which movies I'm looking forward to, Katie? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, there are a lot of good franchise movies coming out. Obviously, yeah. Saw 11. Obviously, A Quiet Place Day 1 is coming out. Terrifier 3 is coming out. Maxine, part of the X series, is coming out. So, like, Three I'm... Seven. Eh. Um, oh. Fuck that movie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. They, they fucked it. Like... What? Scream 6? No, Scream 7. Oh, they fired wait. the main actress because she posted that she was pro-Palestine, which fuck you she should be um yeah. sorry um and then jenna ortega quit right after they've already lowballed neve campbell so it's like just don't make it all the main actors are just gone so it's like yeah. why just yeah scrap it there's no fan service anymore yeah they they dug their own grave on that one so which is unfortunate because well, i do love the saw series or the screen series but yeah. not anymore Uh, (laughs) but my top three are gonna be one another franchise but it's the strangers chapter one they're rebooting the strangers franchise and we already know how much i love that movie so very excited for more masked killer (laughs) goodness you uh two we have an untitled jordan peele film coming out in december so definitely looking forward to that because he doesn't miss and lastly, I'm going to say Nosferatu, yes! which normally I wouldn't say, but it's got Willem Dafoe and Bill Skarsgård. You know they're both going to be oh. popping their pussy the whole time. So yes, I'm pumped. I, I'm really looking forward to those. I hope they put a Spongebob reference in it. <laughs> <laughs> I would die. Which is funny because the Spongebob is a Nosferatu reference. Yeah. So they'd be referencing a the reference. reference. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, but no, isn't the Jordan Peele movie the with the guy who wrote the walking simulator game? What's that game called? Oh, Death, uh, Death Stranding? Death Stranding. 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 Yeah. No, so they're working on a video game together. Oh, uh, okay. He's, yeah, he's helping write the script for a video game that they're doing. Got but it. this is a, a separate thing. So this is his just fourth feature film that he's been working on. So Nice. Well, that's exciting. I know. I'm very excited about it. Uh, But I don't know. I guess should we talk about the movie that we're actually discussing today? No, we have horror news. Oh my god, we have horror news. Katie, tell us the horror news, please. Um, Okay, in today's horror news, Mm -hmm. uh, Walt Disney is rolling over in his grave. (laughs) My ex-Disney cast member soul can physically feel it. Um, But we have not one, but two Mickey Mouse horror movies headed our way. Um, if you haven't heard, an original version of Mickey Mouse that's Steamboat Willie has become part of the public domain as of January 1st. And at least two horror directors wasted no time announcing their Mickey Mouse slashers. Yeah. We've got Mickey's Mouse Trap, which looks to be pretty much finished. There's like a whole ass trailer. Um, oh it God. appears to be a group of teenagers working at an arcade. They're stalked and killed by a man in a Mickey Mouse mask. That trailer dropped on the first, so they wasted absolutely no time there. Yeah. Um, we'll drop a link in the YouTube description if anyone wants to watch the trailer, I guess. Um, there's no release date or anything, but there's definitely something fun campy to look forward to there. Then there's a second movie, apparently in the works, that was announced on the second. Um, but it doesn't really appear to be quite as far along. I think it's more hmm. of like an idea is directed by steven lamour who also directed a grinch for parody <laughs> so oh. if anybody's interested in that uh that's available to you <laughs> um, <laughs> but this making movie is a little closer to the original steamboat willie storyline mm. so like they're on a boat and a mouse comes and starts killing people i guess which is what steamboat willie does he goes and he kills animals and turns them into instruments it's very not mickey mouse of him Uh, but anyway they're they're being a little bit more careful to respect the fact that steamboat willie is what is part of the public domain not mickey mouse 
Yeah. They're like, they've got a lawyer on retainer. They're being super cautious. And um, that's pretty smart because Disney is known to be very litigious. So stay tuned for the onslaught of directors looking to make a quick buck out of Disney's yeah. empire, finally. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think we all knew that this was going to happen yeah. after Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey came out. Yeah. Hopefully these ones will be a little bit more critically successful than Blood and Honey was, but we'll see. I can't imagine they will be. I can't on either. That trailer, but... Yeah, I haven't watched it yet, but um, I don't think that people make these types of movies to be good. I think they make them just for kind of a cash grab. So Yeah, yeah. And we were just talking about there's a ton of Disney horror movies coming out. Not Not Disney horror movies, but horror movies about Disney yeah. characters. There's a Bambi movie. A Bambi gets revenge for his mother's death. There's as he should. Honestly, uh, Cinderella. There's mm-hmm. a couple Peter Pan ones. I think there's a Peter Pan one specifically about the alligator or the crocodile. Oh, interesting. Yeah. There's a bunch. So, what you need to do, I guess. All um, right. Yeah, that's the horror news. I like it. Now we can talk about what we're here for. Oh, finally. (laughs) (laughs) Um, All right. Well, today we're talking about Wreck. Uh, It's been a while since you've seen it, or you haven't seen it, and you're just listening anyway. (laughs) Um, We have a little uh, little synopsis from Davi Silva on IMDb. Uh, Wreck turns on a young TV reporter and her cameraman who cover the night shift at a local fire station. Receiving a call from an old lady trapped in her house, they reach her building to hear horrifying screams, which begin a long nightmare and a uniquely dramatic TV report. It's kind of a little uh, piece of what it's about. It stars Manuela Valesco, who's directed by Paco Plaza, and Yauma Balaguerro. And then they also wrote it with the help of Luis A. Verdejo. So yeah, let's talk rec. What do we talk about? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's it's found footage also. It is found footage, which you nailed <laughs> in your guess of the plot. Thank you. I didn't. Yeah. If I had guessed adults instead of teenagers and fire station instead of high school. Yeah, it would have been a guess the plot instead of not the plot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Um, I was trying to give myself a little credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the formula right. I like it. Um, but no, this movie was fun. It was a short little thing. Yeah, it doesn't overstay its welcome. No, thank God. It's not even in an hour and a half, right? It's like seventy some minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it it was honestly, I think it was originally going to be a made for TV film, and. They released it in theaters, and it was kind of a surprise success. Right off the bat, it got critical and commercial success. Um, spawned three sequels. An American remake, which also had its own sequel. Quarantine. Quarantine. Which I don't remember fully, but I'm pretty sure it's like almost a shot-for-shot remake. Cute. Is it? <laughs> well. <laughs> then it's like, what's the point? Guess but true. I guess also when they change it, I get mad too. So who cares? Yeah. It's fun when they go from animated movies to live action movies. That's fun when it's shot for shot. Yes. Yeah. Then, I get your yeah. Point. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised that they went shot for shot with that though, because the directors of Rec took a lot of time and energy to pump credibility into the filmmaking. Yeah. They did so much. Uh, there's actually a documentary, which I'll put the link in the YouTube description. <laughs> um, it's called Rec Making Of. It's on YouTube. Um, but they go through just exactly how the length that they went to to, to make it feel credible. Mm-hmm. Um, the main girl is a real reporter from Spain. So they, they found a reporter that like people could potentially recognize um, and like knows how to report live things happening um they picked little known actors with good improv skills uh they chose kind of a realistic format 
You didn't share the script with any of the actors until they absolutely had to. And even then, a lot of them didn't know what was going to happen next. Um, They didn't know what their moulage meant. Like when they were getting their makeup done, they didn't know like, oh, why do I have this tube coming out of my neck? They had no idea. Um, That, I don't know if you watched the documentary. I sent it to you. Um, but, <laughs> I didn't have time. <laughs> uh, I, I don't blame you. Uh, it also has a um, video of some of the auditions from the mm. actors, including the little girl. And they're terrifying. So fun to watch. I love that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, they, they put a lot of time and effort into it. And um, I think it paid off. It, it really came across as a, somebody making a news segment. Yeah. For sure. I mean, this came out the same year as Paranormal Activity, and Paranormal Activity oh. kind of did the same thing, right? Hiring unknown actors, which I really like when it's found footage, because again, it's just more immersive. It, it kind of puts you in it, and I feel like there's some really great like, unknown talent that doesn't really get tapped a lot, but they shot in real locations. They didn't use sets. Um, they filmed chronologically, so again, that kind of added to them not knowing what was going to happen. You're shooting it all chronologically, so there were no spoilers for the actors. Yep. Um, and as for her being a real TV reporter, I'm obsessed with that. Because there is a movie, which we will get to, we will watch it eventually, but it's called The Crazies. And it takes place in Iowa. <laughs> oh. And at the very end, there's a little cameo where they do a news report, and they got our local TV man. And so... We were all watching Huge. it like, that's Bruce Downey. What the hell? He's our news guy. And so I can't Gosh. imagine getting to watch an entire movie with your local news anchor. It would feel so immersive and so realistic. Yeah. It just adds to that kind of feeling where you can really put yourself in it and suspend your disbelief for a minute. Yeah, totally. Yeah. What's that movie, that found footage movie from Arizona with the aliens? Oh, Phoenix Forgotten. Yeah, where they yes. have like actual footage of the mayor and all that kind of stuff. Yes, that mm -hmm. that movie was a trip. I love that movie. Uh, hopefully we'll get to talk about that sometime. But uh, Yeah, we definitely will. But Maybe my favorite found footage movie. Just because, to your point, it feels very like, oh my god. Right. Maybe this Being is real. from Arizona. Yeah. When they're using actual CNN footage, you're kind of like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But no, it... it Another thing they mentioned in the in the um, documentary, the making of, mm -hmm. you know, the scene where the firefighter falls from the sky, <laughs> he's thrown off the third story balcony or whatever. And they didn't know. <laughs> no idea. They had no idea. But what's funny is that it took them three or four tries to get the doll over the balcony. <laughs> oh, so, so they would drop it and it would just land on the next story down. It wouldn't fall all the way to the ground. So they would just hear this loud noise and they would startle. So they so, thought that was what was supposed to happen. And then yeah, all of a sudden so, the dummy falls. <laughs> and then, yeah, they're building this anticipation of this dummy falling or hearing something loud happen. And yeah. then suddenly here's this dummy. Oh my that God. That would scare the shit out of me. Seriously. Um, and the other thing is um, the... The cameraman, the person who plays the cameraman, mm -hmm. was a cameraman. He's the director of photography for the movie. So not nice. only was he an actor, essentially, but he was right. also the director of photography. Um, they didn't tell him where to shoot. He was just... Doing, Trying to capture the action. Exactly. Doing cameraman stuff, getting into the action. Um, so that's why that scene especially is like, what the fuck is happening? Because he didn't right. know what was going to happen. So... It's, yeah, the attention to detail for, for making the movie credible is really cool. And they really yeah. show that in the documentary, too. Yeah. And that's also, like, the like the final scenes where it's all dark and night vision and stuff. That, where they didn't really know what was going to be happening around them. And they couldn't really see a lot because it was so dark. Yeah. <laughs> Which we've talked several times before about filming practices. Just trust your actors and stuff like that. But at the same time, like, if you knew that that's what was going to happen going into it, where it was, like, it's just kind of experimental, like, shit's going to happen, but, like, you're safe. Like, I think if you had consent prior going into it, it would kind of be fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'd almost be like being in a haunted house. 
Yeah. But you get paid. <laughs> yeah. Reverse haunted house. Yeah. Um, and they were informed. They were informed. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 They, they signed knew up for it. going into it, this is a horror movie. Shit's going to be happening around you. Yeah. And I'm sure she knew she was going to get pulled at the end. I'm sure they yeah. didn't just touch people without yeah. their consent and knowledge. But yeah. So in that sense, I think it would be kind of fun. <laughs> totally. I agree. Um, speaking of the last scene, though, the the monster, I forget what they call the monster. But the, the girl that oh, was yeah, grown yeah, up yeah, into yeah. the monster. Uh, um, Tristana? Tristana? Was I think name, so. I think? Yeah. Um, I'm talking about the documentary more than I'm talking about the movie. Sorry. But in the documentary, <laughs> um, not just her hit, hit it's, a, it's a man who plays mm-hmm. the monster. Um, not just how that makeup is applied, but how everybody's makeup is applied. And they really go into detail about the, how much detail they put into that. Um, in the documentary, but anyway, um, the uh, gentleman who plays what's her name again? Tristana. Tristana. <laughs> Tristana. Um, that was his first like, monster movie, mm. and then this year he has a movie coming out. Um, what is it? Voyage of the Last Voyage the... of the Demeter. Last Voyage of the Demeter. Yeah, Vampire, which I didn't get movie. to watch that one. I had kind of heard mixed reviews on it, though, so. Yeah. Well, it's Disney, isn't it? Like, actually Disney? I think so. How yeah. How scary could it possibly be? <laughs> hey, they made the sixth sense. <laughs> <laughs> on accident. Yeah. <laughs> Best decision they ever made. <laughs> oh, my God. Besides Mulan. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um oh, you'll love this. Because Is we it about also, a composer? No, it's about video games. Oh, okay. This movie was actually one of the major inspirations for the video game Outlast. I've never played Outlast. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. But Outlast Trials came out last year, so that was like a whole resurgence oh, wait. of that. I know Outlast Trials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's that's a series. But the original oh, one, okay. it deals a lot about like, infections that are possessions and stuff like that so that's right which i haven't played it either but i've seen like little snippets of people playing it and i've heard really good things so i definitely want to play it eventually nice that's so, fun yeah. i know fun right? video game yeah a little inspo <laughs> cute um i yeah, know i'm a huge fan of this movie it was very well done. And I think that every movie should release a 45-minute documentary on YouTube after they release the movie. <laughs> I agree. Thank I you. I want to know everything about the filming. Yeah. It's just really interesting to me. And that's why as soon as I watch a movie, I'm on IMDb looking up all the facts that I can find. I don't know. I just find it so fascinating. So I love yeah. it when there's shit like that. Yeah. It, it definitely made me appreciate the process and the movie itself a lot more. Yeah. You should, if you haven't watched it on, I think on Netflix, it's called Movies That Made Us. And they like oh, yeah, go yeah, through. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that series. Seriously. Like, I canceled Netflix because fuck you guys. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> we took advantage of their holiday I'm, thing, though. You're getting some hot topics going on. <laughs> I know, seriously. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that, that same thing where they just kind of talk about how these movies got made and all of that. I just, it's just so fascinating to me. Yeah. Oh, another thing that I liked is after the infected breakout, there's an elderly guy and he runs upstairs and leaves his wife behind in the hallway and then they're never seen again. Like we just never see those characters again. Mm-hmm. And normally you'd kind of be like, what happened to them? Or you expect to see them again. But I kind of like it because again, it leads to this authenticity of the film of like you're only seeing this camera's perspective so to think that they would capture everything that's happening is just unrealistic so i kind of like that there were some characters that just disappeared and we don't really know what happened to them like yeah who's to say i mean they probably turn into zombies but... i mean it statistically it's not looking good for them <laughs> uh, yeah. um, I, I guess i shouldn't say zombie this is like an infected movie not exactly a zombie movie but i know i actually started thinking a lot about when evil lurks when i was watching this 
Because I always forget how this movie ends. And like, to me, this is a zombie infection movie. It always has been. I've always classified it as that, even mm-hmm. though it's technically possession. And I remember you saying that about When Evil Lurks, and I was like, it's a possession movie. But now I was like, I kind of have to eat my words because this kind of feels like a zombie movie. It's like a zombie movie, yeah. (laughs) I mean, come on. When Evil Lurks, she's walking down the road eating her kids' brains. Come on. I will take back my criticism of you feeling that it is a zombie movie. Thank you. I Um, guess, yeah, infection could be being infected by this demon. Yeah. I'll eat my I words. Think... I'll say it. I'm wrong. Thank you. Oh, my God. I'm just going to go ahead and mark that clip. <laughs> <laughs> just a two-second TikTok. Of, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Yep. I'm wrong. Just over and over. Uh, um, I, 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 I know that there are some diehard horror fans out there that are like, this isn't a zombie movie. But it just, you know. Zombie can in- incorporate like so many things. Yeah, I feel like if you if you classify it as infection, then you can get away with a lot more. Yeah. Because then yeah. it's like, you could be infected by anything, rather than like... Because that's... I mean, I think Danny Boyle has said that 28 Days Later, they didn't think that it was a zombie film, because they're not dying and reanimating. They're just getting yeah. infected by this disease. But I kind of think of it as a zombie movie. <laughs> yeah. In this movie... They do die and reanimate. They like they do. Sometimes they don't reanimate, but they do die and then reanimate. Yeah. So yeah. I will I will take it as an infection movie. Yeah. It yeah. feels like it. I'd rather say. I mean, it is an. It literally is an infection. It's like rabies. They say it in the movie. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, they thought it was rabies at the beginning. Yeah, they say it's like Which rabies. I kind of wish it would have been because rabies is already kind of scary. So. Rabies is fucking <laughs> scary. Rabies is terrifying. So yeah. if it was an aggressive, even more aggressive form of rabies that was breaking out, oh, yeah. Chalk me up to no thank you. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Um, that's the scariest scene in To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, yeah. The dog's like, not that that's a scary movie, but I mean, that yeah. is an uncomfortable scene. <laughs> It's a lot of, yeah, uncomfortable moments in that movie. Yeah, honestly. Um, Look at us, though, agreeing. Agreeing on infection films. Yeah, I mean, it clearly is, so I'm glad. (laughs) That actually reminds me of, okay, so the two directors, they came up with a deal before they even started shooting that basically if one of them pitched an idea and the other one didn't like it, they just scrap it immediately no second thought just okay we both have to like it and i kind of like that but also what if you came up with an idea you really loved and they were like trash (laughs) yeah right like it's Uh, good for you if they come up with a shitty idea but (laughs) oh god i get too attached to my ideas and be like no yeah yeah that's the worst feeling when you bring something that you're really excited about and people are just like meh yeah. No. But then again, sometimes I like it if it's if you have an idea and someone's like, that's really stupid. At least I would second guess it and be like, is it? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I got a little too carried away. But maybe if maybe if the agreement was like you get one free pass, one overrule. Mm. Like, no, this is a good idea and we are gonna put it in the movie one time, you know? A one time golden buzzer. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Also, originally, they were gonna have them. They were gonna have them be shadowing police officers instead, and then they changed it to firemen because they were like they're more popular and accepted by the general public, um, which is true. They they said. <laughs> specifically in the documentary that it was because they're seen as heroes ever since 9-11. Which, they're not wrong. That's, yeah. But I feel not... like 9-11 changed a lot of perceptions. Like, I feel yeah. like a fireman were still liked before that, but oh, true, after true. that it was like... Yeah. 
Heroes. Catapulted up. Yeah. Um, yeah, there should have always been respect for firefighters, but yeah. after 9-11, it significantly skyrocketed. Um, but isn't that that just like, to me, that's shocking. I mean, obviously, it's it wouldn't be shocking if it was an American movie, obviously, but the fact that a Spanish movie also yeah. was like taking into consideration things that happened like 9-11, like, I guess it's just to me, it didn't register until they said that that 9-11 had as big of an impact on the entire world not just us yeah i uh, i yeah i agree i always kind of think it's interesting when you hear about how that impacted other countries because you wouldn't think like there's a lot of tragedies that happen in other countries that america does not give a fuck about so yeah it's crazy that that kind of but i think even i want to say it was 28 days later that they had to film something on around, 9-11 on a, yeah and they had to take a moment and just stop and that was a mm-hmm. british production like that what you know true so it's interesting yeah how that impacted the that. world yeah seriously yeah but Crazy. anyway back to rack <laughs> yeah sorry a little downer there yeah um it's interesting yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, every movie needs a documentary. I documentary agree. companion. I mean, they're filming it all anyway. Why not just give it to the people? Come on, give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, how scary! How did scary you did you think it was? No, me. I said it first. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, um. I gave it a two. Hey. It was a little scary. Um, it was fun though. It was just, it was like, it was fast, and I, I hate like, we've talked about just slogs of movies. <laughs> Bo is a phrase of fucking slog. It's just like, oh god, is it over yet? But this movie was fun. It was not too long. It was not too short. It was like, you know, bam, oh bam, my bam, god, bam. we were literally talking about movies that came out in twenty twenty three, and we both forgot about. <laughs> Are you surprised? <laughs> sorry to Ari Aster. Uh, sorry, Ari. I liked a lot of that movie, though. Just, it was, I had to take multiple breaks. That's crazy. <laughs> it's a slog. It was a slog, yeah. Which, yeah. I don't always mind a slog. But that one was a, it was a slog. Yeah, if it's good. Yeah. If it's not culminating in a giant penis monster in a attic. Sorry, Bo. Come on, Ari. Don't do that to us again. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> I just want more clear boyfriend fair. movies. Don't we all? <laughs> How scary did you think it was? I gave it a 1.5. Okay. Because again, there are moments where it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like um, the kid in the basement or in the attic? Yes. Fuck. Yeah. I got me. There's some I know it was coming. Yeah. yeah. But again, like you said, I feel like it's so chaotic and go, go, go. Mm -hmm. It's nonstop. Yeah. And so I feel like I personally get a little bit more scared. Because when it's like that, you're just ready for it all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I think I get a little bit more scared when there's moments of tension where you're like, what the fuck is going to (laughs) happen? That's fair, yeah. But Yeah, totally fair. It definitely, it had its moments. Mm Mm-hmm. How uh, how sexy do you think it was? I gave it another 1.5. Oh. It wasn't that sexy, but like, Anello was pretty cute, you know, walking around in a little tank top. <laughs> okay. I like it. She right. Was, yeah. She wasn't bad to look at the whole time. <laughs> what did you give okay. it? A one. Okay. She didn't yeah. do it for you, huh? Well, not that she's not good looking or whatever, mm. but... um. I was distracted. Yeah. By the face eating or? But primarily. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not into war. Um. <laughs> it's like the only thing. <laughs> but <That's>, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even we have our limits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, how fucked up did you think it was? Uh, give it two. Okay. It's like, whatever, you know. <laughs> They're eating faces, like, just zomb- 
Just zombie things. Just infected yeah. things. Yeah, just the girly things. Yeah, it's like, yeah, whatever. Um, I I almost wished they turned away when, I think it was one of the police officers, took a hammer to one of the mm. infected heads. Yeah. The cameraman turned away, which is a real shame. Yeah. They would have bumped it up a little bit. Even the sound was kind of like, whoop. Yeah. Well. Uh, and maybe the intent was for them to show that. And the, I mean, the cameraman didn't know what he was supposed to be looking at. So. Yeah. Who knows? That's true. Authenticity. We'd love to see it. Mm-hmm. What did you give it? I gave it a 1.5. Okay. Um, I didn't realize how many 1.5s. <laughs> Lots of them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The one felt wrong because I do think there's like moments. But can I really pinpoint a specific moment? No, but. I think overall, the vibe is like a little bit, yeah, a little bit up there. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Thank you. Uh, overall, right? Is that next? Overall, yeah, that's it. Overall, I kept going back and forth again. You know me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But I kept going back and forth between a 4 and a 4.5. Because oh. I think this is an excellent movie. It's one of my favorite found footage movies. It's one of my favorite infection movies. I just think, again, they did so much to make it feel so real that it just pops up. It's a fun watch. Yeah. It doesn't overstay its welcome. And for unknown actors and a reporter, they did a great job. Yes. Acting was on point. So, yeah, I, I like this movie. I really enjoy it. What about but you? which did you give it? A four or four point five? I don't know. Don't make me choose. <laughs> well, I t- I'll tell you, I gave it one of those two. Did you? I did. I think. I think I'm gonna go four point five. Wow. Okay. What about you? I gave it a four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very solid movie. It is. Um, I don't. I don't know quite what I am missing from it. Mm. Um, because it was fun it was well acted I think I think maybe had they like toned up the gore a little bit or I don't I don't know exactly what it's missing but to me yeah. it's a four um, from the heart I like it um, but a very good movie and I think yeah. I think that a lot of it boils down to like there are definitely better found footage movies um, not a lot of them but I had to give it a four for that reason that's fair. Yeah. This is up there for me, though, found footage-wise. Phoenix Rising. I don't like that one as much. Paranormal Activity. I think this is above that for me. Yeah? Yeah. That's fair. It is very good. It is. It just didn't do... Maybe because maybe because Paranormal Activity was the first found footage movie that I saw. It just didn't yeah. do to me what Paranormal Activity did to me. And maybe I think it's because I was 10 years younger. <laughs> the first watch on Paranormal Activity was crazy, right? Like, yeah, everybody who saw that when it came out was like, oh, oh fuck. But the rewatchability isn't there for me. Because yeah. now I'll rewatch Paranormal Activity and be like, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so just like building on tension and you just watching the clock and waiting for something to happen that it was scary the first time you see it but i think this movie the rewatchability is better because it is so intense yeah but i do still like paranormal activity it's solid yeah that's fair that's fair yeah and this movie doesn't have mika micah whatever that guy's name in oh god that guy was so fucking annoying in paranormal activity I, see i don't <laughs> the remember boyfriend, much. the husband he sucked <laughs> Um, see, I have the rewatchability factor because it's been so long since I've watched them because they made me piss yeah. myself that I can rewatch them and it'll be fresh. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Solid movie. Would you survive? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Um, no. There were, Not there were enough. literally points in the movie where I was like, okay, I'm just sacrificing myself at this point 
Or like stealing someone's gun or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, nobody survived. So I'm out for sure. Well, you don't know if anybody survived. I'm pretty sure. There are some fates that are left unknown. I bet I could guess. Did well, you survive? No. <laughs> no, even I can't uh, maneuver myself a win here. <laughs> Chances are low. <laughs> yeah. But I will say, you do find out Anala's fate in Wreck 2. Oh. Tell me. You, you get to know if she lived or died. She died, right? Who's to say? She died. It's probably another reporter reporting on how a local reporter died. <laughs> That's probably how the first movie starts. That's how I was started. <laughs> um. All right. Next week. We can both predict the movie. I think you should. Me? Yeah. Um, ooh, okay. Next week, we're talking about Night Swim, which is a new movie that's coming out. Mm-hmm. It actually comes out tonight, the day that we're recording this. Yes. Like, right um, now. Okay. Night Swim. There's a family. And... They move into a new house, and there's a pool, obviously. And I think the pool is haunted. And it just drags you down into the depths. And I think they find out that it was built on an old cemetery. And so the dead people are haunting the pool. No, I'm, no. I'm describing Poltergeist. That's already it. <laughs> what? Shit! This is hard. <laughs> Thank you. you Poltergeist is about me. a haunted pool? Well, no, but it is about a haunted burial ground and they're building a pool in the backyard. <laughs> so... Oh. Oh. I'm telling you, um, fucking hard. Okay, this is just a Poltergeist 2. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I think that they move and that's it. They win because Good. they just they leave the house because they're smart. Good for them. You're definitely better at this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, that's not Have you seen the trailer? Yeah, 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 where they're playing Marco Polo in the pool. Yeah. Oh, look at how sweet. And spaghetti. then there's like a Oh. Gross. Pit stop. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're playing Marco Polo, and then it's like, oh, like an unknown voice is like, Polo. It gives me paranormal, though. Like, it, it's definitely like a supernatural movie. Okay, see, because that's not, okay. That's, that's not, not what you the got. vibe I got out of it. What did you get from it? So I was with you. They bought a house. They got the pool. The pool is not haunted. It's not, okay. No. What do you there's, feel? There's a man. A guy? A man who somebody died in the pool, but that's not who's haunting the pool. That, no? The, the pool's not haunted. Somebody died in the pool. Okay. And the, there's a man that wants revenge hmm. for somebody dying in that pool. Got it. The dad of the person that died or the husband or I don't know. Okay. But he doesn't want anybody to swim in that pool and disturb it's not haunted but you know what i'm saying um so he is around and mm-hmm. watching the pool oh okay yeah so whenever they're like playing like a or whatever he shows up and starts killing got it so it's more of a slasher yeah yeah okay that's what i took out of the trailer i got more like paranormal supernatural okay that's fair you see who's right we'll find out I'm excited. First new movie of 2024. Yeah, me too. I hope we get to do some more new ones this year. Yeah, for sure. Definitely want to like work in some new ones as they come out. We watched a lot of classics last year, which is exactly what I needed to give me a good foundation. Yeah. Now we can do a, a good mix of both. Yeah, for sure. 
Cool. Well, bye. Yep. <laughs> <sighs>